From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. A guy in India thought it'd be fun to get a selfie with a bear and was mauled to death. Yeah, he's the only one who didn't see that one coming. Even the bear was like, dude, really? Recent brain research shows that humor hits men and women differently. So stop asking her to pull your finger already. She does not find it funny. She thinks it's gross. Even though, yeah, it, it is kind of funny. In Italy, a lovesick guy stole an ambulance so he could serenade his girlfriend with its siren. Police say he jumped into the ambulance, turned on the siren, and sang romantic love songs to his girlfriend until the neighbors called about the noise. Now, we have really come a long way from boomboxes and Peter Gabriel, haven't we? Scientists predict that 42 percent of Americans will be obese by the year 2030. For once in my life, I'm ahead of the curve! Yeah! In Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, 64-year-old Don Gorski has eaten 30,000 Big Macs, almost one every day for 46 years. No kidding! Don ate his first Big Mac in 1972 at the same McDonald's where he chowed down his 30,000th one, and he's only missed about eight days in between. And that includes a day in 1982 in which there was a snowstorm that shut down the McDonald's restaurant, as well as the day that his mom died in 1998. Quote, she requested I not eat a Big Mac on the day she died in remembrance of her, unquote, he says. Gorski also notes that he has OCD, which has led him to catalog thousands of receipts, wrappers, and containers over the course of more than four decades. And he does not appear to be suffering for his cause, either. Ellen DeGeneres had his cholesterol checked back in 2003 and came up with 140, and he's run a marathon with Big Mac number 21,387 in hand while he was running. After consuming number 30,000 on the Big Macs, he took one for the road as well and said, maybe I'll be eating it when I catch myself on the news. Who knows? Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling apologized for killing the character Dobby the House Elf in Book 7. You know, I'm not sure how sorry she really is, though. I mean, she gave the apology while rolling around in a giant bed made of money. For her wedding with Prince Harry, Meghan Markle has decided not to have a maid of honor. Nuts. Another dream of mine crushed. The NSA collected over 500 million phone calls last year, triple what it did in 2016. So you could be outraged that the NSA is listening in on even more of your phone calls. Or you can congratulate them for listening in on even more of your phone calls. If you want to be happier, cancel your Facebook account. That's the conclusion from a Danish think tank that insists quitting Facebook will not only make you happier, but also less angry, less sad, and less worried. The Happiness Research Institute in Copenhagen, Denmark, found that after only seven days away from Facebook, those users reported feeling happier, less sad, less worried, less angry, and less depressed. For more information, you can read this entire article on my Facebook page. Scientists just named a newly discovered beetle after Leonardo DiCaprio. Interesting that in the short amount of time since it was discovered, the beetle has already slept with three of its co-beetles. In Oregon, a horse is suing its owner for $100,000, seeking damages for neglect. It's actually the Animal Legal Defense Fund bringing the lawsuit on behalf of the horse, so not as strange as it sounds from the headline. Ironically, the name of the horse is Justice. The lawsuit is taking a long time, though. When asked how much money the horse was suing for, the horse had to knock on the ground with its hoof a hundred thousand times. Keep listening, I have a lot more weird news coming. You know, twice a year, I take one week and ask you to join me in saving lives. Well, this week, you can save a child's life in Haiti or Guatemala for a single gift of just $50. That one-time gift of $50 through Food for the Poor will provide a full year of food and clean water for life for that child as it gives them the resources to filter the water for drinking. And if you'd like to do more, well, a one-time gift of $250 will provide the same for an entire family of five. I've supported Food for the Poor for several years now because I believe in what they do, and I hope you will too. 
You can give online by clicking the Give Life banner at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com or click the link in the show notes. If you'd rather give by phone, you can call 855-901-4673. That's 855-901-HOPE. Or on your mobile phone, you can dial pound 250 and say the keyword HOPE. Please make that one-time gift of $50 or $250 this week and bring them food, clean water, and, most of all, hope and life. A New Jersey farm has come out with ham-flavored ice cream, which I think means mustard is now a legitimate ice cream topping. What another reason not to drive while tired? Well, according to a survey by AAA in Washington, D.C., nine out of ten police officers have thought a driver was drunk when really the motorist was overtired. So officers will now ask if you've been drinking or if you need a nappy poo. In Aurora, Colorado, police ticketed 26-year-old Angelique Sanchez for allegedly damaging a 7-Eleven microwave by heating up urine inside it, which caused the urine to explode. Apparently, Sanchez thought microwaved urine would help her pass a drug test for a future job she was applying for. The police report shows the 7-Eleven clerk called police after hearing a loud bang a few seconds after Sanchez placed something in the microwave. The clerk told police Sanchez looked at the microwave and walked out the door, and the clerk noticed yellow liquid dripping from the microwave and the smell was unquestionably urine. A background check revealed Sanchez has been arrested several times and convicted of theft, and now I would think also charged with urinating in public. Facebook is coming out with their own dating service, because apparently they felt all of your information that's already been compromised wasn't enough. Meghan Markle's estranged half-brother has written an extraordinary open letter to Prince Harry in which he urges the groom-to-be to call off the royal wedding. Because the one person in the world you know that you're going to get an unbiased opinion from is somebody described as estranged half-brother. 7-Eleven has announced they're going to be offering healthier options for their customers. Because what the world needs now is a kale slurpee. English teachers are shaking their heads in dismay. Only 43% of U.S. adults read at least one work of literature in the last year. That is, novels, short stories, poetries, or plays, marking a three-decade low according to a report from the National Endowment for the Arts. It is the long, steady decline of literary reading, laments the Washington Post. The NDA has been tracking adult reading and arts participation since 1982, when the literature reading rate was an impressive 57 percent. The survey counts only those books read for pleasure, not because they were required for work or school. In an attempt to capture the broadest possible range of leisure reading, there was also no distinction made between physical books and books read on e-readers, such as the Amazon Kindle. You know, we do read tweets, though, I mean, and you spend a lot of time on Instagram. Hey, how about you create pretty pictures of War and Peace and then send out the entire novel, 280 characters at a time? We might read it. Speaking of Twitter, they say that 350 million passwords were stolen, so if you've not changed your password lately, now would be a good time. Instead of a password of 12345, you might want to change that to 54321, because nobody will ever figure that out. Vice President Mike Pence said there is a lot of prayer in this White House. Hey, what a coincidence! We're uh, staying pretty busy praying out here too, Mike, because of what's going on in there. A study finds that people who use AOL email give the most money to political campaigns because apparently they have a lot of disposable income from not spending money on anything other than dial-up. I mean, seriously, who uses AOL email anymore? President Trump is going to appoint Patriots coach Bill Belichick to his sports council. Oh, well, well, wait, wait, really? The President of the United States has a sports council? Okay, go ahead. Tell me government is not too big and overly invasive in our lives. We're paying for a sports council. Become a patron of the show and get exclusive content just for official weirdos. Get the details at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. And if you like scary, true stories, check out my other podcast at WeirdDarkness.com. For Daily Dose of Weird News, I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos.